I'm Dick Tan. I'm going to present the my cow lab. Okay, let me introduce myself first. Uh, actually, I'm a graduate research assistant for the last two years, and I mainly, uh, on, of course, in uh, 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 the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And ma mainly in the last two years, I focus on my uh, virtual machine story research, both and other. Is this I'm t going to present is my cow lab, uh, the platform to uh, f for education use. And, and then currently, I, I, I'm no longer a research assistant and a software engineer in a local uh, in a video uh, infrastructure company. Oops. Okay. And okay, I'm going to give a, a background about uh, why, why we have uh, uh, opened uh, my outlet and also the details and also some painful experience about <laughs> my uh, open stack. Okay, the story begins with a course. Okay, uh, we have a course that uh, start offering from the spring 2012, and this is an introduction to cloud computing. The computer uh, science and engineering department provides a new course, and therefore uh, we have to build a cloud test bed for the student to evaluate or try or learning some uh, cloud operation in the platform. And I just briefly talk about the talk course. The course actually just talking about uh, basically a fun fundamentals concept of cloud computing and also some map reduced programming. You know, uh, big data is a very hot topic here uh, nowadays. And the course will cover several uh, things like map reduce uh, algorithm, uh, Hadoop, uh, HIDFS, and also some cloud storage like Swift and also some virtualization. That means we have to provide a cow platform, cow test back platform to support those, uh, those learning. Okay, and therefore uh, we build a cow test back to support the learning. And actually the hardware is just briefly uh, take out three machines, three servers and 20 uh, restation machine, and also a switch we collect them together and then form an open stack car. And the architecture was very straightforward. One is the management node, and also we maintain Trinity uh, 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 as a compute node that one when VMs, we are providing both VM provisioning service and also a car storage service. Uh, we have been used from 2011, and we have used a very old version at the beginning, Catus, which is very poor, and I will talk about it later. And also later on, in last summer, uh, 2012, we have upgraded to a, a better version of Ubuntu, a better version of Ubuntu and also the OpenStack. And we have also developed our control platform, not using the Horizon uh, Horizon dashboard, we have developed our on our own for the student. And actually, we have just a simple deployment here. And okay, the, the main focus part of is the MyCal Lab panel. That we mean the web interface to control everything, just like a Horizon uh, dashboard. And the two components here, the one first is the uh, VM Lab, just the same as uh, you may see very uh, many times in this uh, summit, that's a web interface to control the VM, provide uh, VM pro uh, provisioning and everything else. And we have add two features on top of our, our simple, simple um, control panel. The first one is our performance monitoring. We give a graph to show the uh, each resources utilization, and also a mechanism for students to better to use uh, a password preset mechanism. Of course, we have a demo later. And also we have a Hadoop lab, which uh, have a simple interface to let a student, when they uh, submit their Hadoop job, map reduce job on the system. Okay, here are the screenshots. You, you will see that uh, you have uh, the VM running, you have the corresponding uh, resources utilization history graph, and also a Hadoop app, which you can submit your own map reduce program, and then you can obtain the result from the, from the system. 
uh, without com entering any commands. You just write your program, prepare your data set, and then submit to the system. They will do it for you. And you have uh, just put the program and data set. You don't have to uh, set up your own Hadoop cluster. You may, as you may know, that set up Hadoop cluster cost maybe several times, several weeks of time that that could be avoided and using this system directly. Okay, I will give a soft demo. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, here, uh, just a login page is somehow similar to the OpenStack one, but actually this one is uh, is totally uh, written by us. We just uh, reference to their template. And you may see after login, we have two uh, two major components, VMLab and also Hadoop Lab. And okay, we, after we go into the VM lab, we can see all the VMs uh, images that you can use to uh, start your VMs. And uh, there are okay. Of course, you can launch the VM using uh, your uh, choose chosen uh, VMs. And of course, you can type your name for your VM. And also, you can. You can see there are several different options for your VM. Let's say you can choose more memory for your VM or less memory or more CPU power. You can choose. And also there are quota for each student. And then uh, you may see we have uh, launch VM on the top, demo server 2, and using the uh, server image and also our uh, specification and his building. And after a while, okay, it is ready. We have our IP and we can also uh, actually go into the machine. And actually the progress of the VM. To simplify uh, the, the system, we have he generate the username and password at, at this screen instead of using the complicated key pair uh, mechanism to log in into the VM. We have pre gen the username and password. As you may see, okay, we, we have the password and then user can, student just using this password and log in directly. We don't use, uh, use uh, dealing with the complicated key pair, SSH key pair problems. And you may see, okay, they have a, the student got the VM, and then, yes, and then just play it, and then they will just, okay, let me see, okay. Okay, uh, I have also mentioned about the statistics uh, that's one lot, uh, it doesn't build in, in OpenStack. Uh, we develop our own uh, performance monitoring system. Uh, user can monitor the CPU usage, memory usage, this IO, and also level IO for, of each VM. And you can see the, the, time, the, the data is real time generated. For several seconds, they it will update. And of course, you can just uh, Take a snapshot for uh, for your VM also uh, to before you, uh, terminate your VM. Of course, you can also terminate your VM. Okay. And I will go into also uh, have a present uh, demo of the hard to black. Okay, we have firstly prepared two VMs for the hard to black. We have prepared two VMs, and we can just enter the information. Let's say the the IP, the username, and also the number of nodes. Let's say we take two VMs for the hard to black. And then we just enter the information, and you can just click the button, enter, and then the system will create the, the Hadoop 
cluster automatically. Actually, the, the slides, if you have to create your own Hadoop cluster, you have to follow around uh, 40 slides uh, around that. That's complicated. And that's the system we can avoid, we can avoid the, the complicated step using the interface. As, as you may see, the, the Hadoop process is running. And just take up several seconds, and this is ready. Now. OK, uh, I will demonstrate a job. Let's say uh, I want to run uh, big data processing. Let's say I select uh, com, uh, a data set file, which is uh, uh, just a text, uh, something a uh, public domain text file. As you may see, I will show that here. It's just a lot of big data. OK, of course, for demonstration, this is just a small fair, uh, data that is in the public domain. A small data set file, we were going to can the wording inside the, 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 the data file using the MapReduce program. <coughs> OK, we upload the data set file. And on your right hand side, you may see The data set file is ready in the Hadoop in folder. And and okay, of course you have to select your uh, map reduce program to process the map big data. OK, it will take uh, several seconds. Just skip it for our demo purpose. And you may see the, the result of the uh, file, the Hadoop job. Here is the history. And we will download the, re the result file. And the result file shows the, uh, the frequency or currency of the uh, combination of in initial wordings in our data set. For example, let's say we appear something like apple and ice cream, and those combination initial will be sold for the wordings. And here is the demonstration of how to let. OK, and then I just destroy the Hadoop server. Maybe we uh, maybe do it later. Just build another one. OK. And OK, and I will talk about the experience that I uh, uh, encountered in last two years. And that's painful experience. And first, uh, the first version that I used is Catalyst. Uh, it is a buggy system. Okay, I have to admit that. Okay, there are lots of bugs in the VM's left source system. That means I have to find. Uh, I, I forget how many numbers of bugs in those uh, in this subsystem, and also I have handled an issue about the dashboard VNC problem, and okay, this is an old age uh, OpenStack dashboard. I think I believe most of you didn't see it before. This is a very basic, only a, only a feature that is important is show the console, which is show the screen of the VM, and then you can do anything on that. But there is a bug, 
about the WebSocket issue, and then I have to handle it and just uh, open, uh, just modify a head to, to the, some library. That's a painful issue. That that's uh, 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 of course this is already two years ago. Okay, today's uh, OpenStack is much better, and also after one year it should be last summer, or uh, uh, I forgot. Uh, anyway, and uh, we changed into a uh, SS uh, uh, platform that's much better. We have only encountered two bugs, and then everything was fine. The first bug is about the migration. Okay, that's a minor bug that can be easily fixed it. And other bus is uh, interesting about that. We have a, a dashboard interface. We have a good IEPI. A user can use their username and password and not in. The bug is you cannot, user cannot change the password on their own, okay? They have to ask the system administrator to, to modify the password in the in that version of dashboard or OpenStack API. And that's a bug that should be fixed at, it's fixed in the forum, but I have to back perform the forum to, to our system. That's an interesting issue that, okay, I cannot input, I can't change my password. That's unbelievable in some sense. Okay, they are fixed, of course. And the old interface of dashboard, and uh, okay, the, the WebSocket issue that I have mentioned earlier. And also there are several minor issues about the instability. Uh, I'm not sure the, the reason, but uh, I have to manually handling the issue directly by manipulating the data, database and also some uh, command about the virtual machines. Uh, and then the Swift, another story that's uh, not a good story because, okay, uh, some, of them, some of you may be heard about the Swift version one and Swift version two. There's uh, two different APIs. The one first one is around, uh, okay, two years ago, uh, let's say, then the version two is around one year ago, and they are not comparable. And you cannot, okay, in the past, you cannot run those two versions of API simultaneously. That's, uh, uh, I can't say how, 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 how poor I am, because we have uh, developed some program based on the version one, and then, they switch the API and then, oh. Anyway, uh, the way around we have used in the past have to manually switch between the, the settings. We have, uh, for some case, we have to switch to version one and in some case we switch to version two, the Swift API. And luckily, I'm not sure the, the detail because I'm not keep track, but uh, in the recent version, they have provided option to, to provide two versions of API simultaneously. They, that means, the server can, can provide two versions of API at the same time. Luckily, uh, they have fixed the problem, it seems. And also, uh, the Swift, the object store, are not desired for small requests uh, because, uh, okay, we have, uh, we have trouble, we have trouble because students write program to issue some small requests and almost get the surf surface done. Uh, or when they, they put, let's say, a few bytes and then push to our Swift. And then the system were very busy. Oops. And there are so, uh, several minor issues about the VM, or I, I guess everyone faced about them. And okay, the plane are no longer exists. Luckily, the system is running for uh, one year or more. Uh, and currently, it's still using the, 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 this system. And uh, actually, that's not a uh, uh, work for me, uh, by me, and also that's uh, two undergraduates, they designed the web panel, that means the, the, the fancy interface, fancy, fancy interface, there's two undergrad design in uh, summer, and also, of course, I have to give many fans, so I'm, I'm not sure that's that the, my supervisor, this, that he assigned me to this project and I work for uh, one, one and more years. And also, uh, I have to give a short uh, 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 acknowledgement to the, the grant that they give money to us to, 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 to buy the machines, to, to hire the, the undergraduate to write the program. And that's all of my presentation. And any questions? <laughs>